often. So uh, my name is Gopeng. As Ming has mentioned, I'm one of the co-chairs of ESIP Information Quality Cluster. Um, push it the opportunity to introduce to you uh, community guidelines for fair data set quality information. Uh, David would talk a little bit more about ESIP um, information quality cluster, and I will um, focus on the guidelines today. Um, I don't think I need to see much about why should we care about the uh, data qualities and the potential impact of poor data quality to this group. I have a list uh, some the main potential impacts uh, of poor data quality and including uh, reputation that could be individual researchers or the organizations and uh, some uh, impact on the decision making, whether it's due to um, decision on data use or um, making decision either policy or um, other related decision on use of data. And uh, the last one has to do with the financial loss um, that probably touch mostly on um, the business in sectors, but for the research, um, it's also associated with the low productivity because we have to spend a lot of time on cleaning data. And for the last business, including uh, either data product use or services, because uh, customers just uh, frustrated with the poor data quality that either served or as a base for ser services. Um, this one um, talk about the uh, EU has, <coughs> sorry, set out to estimate what are the costs of not sharing data. They have found that um, it at a minimum of um, 10 billion pounds per year. This slides uh, indicate um, the data scientists spend about 80% of their time on the uh, bit on cleaning organizing data and collecting data set. Um, this is for the um, AI or machine learning um, of data scientists dealing with the big data. For the regular scientists like us and dealing with the normal data sets, um, for me, I have been working with uh, various data types for last uh, over last uh, 20 years. And mostly I'm spending 10% on collecting data because most of my data I need are small and I tend to know something about them already. Um, so 10% is a, a good estimate. And spending most of the time when I get the data set I need on um, estimate their data qualities and organize them, co-locate and make them analysis ready. So for the um, normally, for the cost of not sharing information about data quality, um, whether we think it's 80%, uh, sorry, 60 or 70%, um, that's going to compound the cost estimate by not sharing data. And the, the estimated um, 10 billion, that's just for EU only. So globally, that's going to be a lot more, um, particularly again, due to the productivity loss because of redundancy in assessing data qualities. And the part of impact is made on the decisions and some of the decisions could be million dollar decisions, such as those for disaster response. And we have one real life use case included in the guidelines uh, document. So for data set quality, um, not just data quality itself, uh, it includes quality of data, including input and output, and um, include the softwares and workflows, metadata and documentation where uh, are very familiar with that. And I also touch on the quality of the procedures and the process and in infrastructures, tools and systems. Um, they are mostly uh, relevant for services. 
So in a, in a nutshell, the information about quality of the state of data, metadata and documentations and through the entire life cycle of a data set. Um, I like to share a real life experience on the quality of the metadata. And I worked on a um, paper comparing the um, the numer global numerical model forecast and uh, satellite data uh, with the tau um, data set. Um, those are high quality and we use it as a um, tools to estimate the bias and of the satellite data as well as the uh, model systems. Um, we submit the paper and we got review back, you know, we addressed review and everything's all set. And then one of the reviewers realized that the metadata in the metadata record, the latitude, longitude for one of the buoys was off by half degrees. Um, so she forward that, asked the um, editors and to forward that to me. And I was like, oh my God, you know, um, the whole paper has to go down the drain. And so I had to redo all the interpretations, redo all the analysis. In the end, uh, it doesn't impact the result. And I felt fortunately enough that uh, one of the reviewers was the scientist for that particular buoy. And it would be a lot worse if the paper was published. Um, normally, I will uh, talk about needs and challenges and the benefits of sharing data set quality information. But today, I like to use this opportunity to focus on the um, the guidelines it's th their themselves. So I have listed this too. If you are interested in learn more about it, uh, you can do that afterwards. But I. Uh, we'll touch on two things. One is on changing data paradigm. Another one is by the popular demand and talk, touch on the data and information quality dimensions. So in the distant past, like 20 years ago, uh, especially when I was a student, data are not readily available or routinely available or shared. And most of the data users are um, do have the extent knowledge on the subject or their data set. We do have to spend um, a lot of time get familiar with the data set. And now nowadays uh, we have more and more data that readily available and they're shared. And uh, the users start to expand to include general publics. They don't have or little knowledge on the subject or the data set. One of the example I'm very familiar with is the uh, Reynolds Global Sea Surface Temperature. I was um, numerical, I was modeler in my previous life. I worked with the um, atmospheric and oceanic general um, circulation models as well as the coupled models. So at the time, the Reynolds SST, it was one data set and everybody used it. And it was monthly and uh, um, two degree by two degree. And the the SSD data, it's a very uh, important data set it used for um, initial or um, boundary conditions for general circulation model and also you, a critical data set to validate um, the output from coupled models. But nowadays, and um, for the group for high, res uh, high resolution SST, and you, I searched a um, couple of days ago, it has 109 data set. Those are global high resolution SST data and the daily, and they are generated or produced by trusty sources uh, such as NOAA, and NASA and, and almost every um, big institution has um, one data set. So in the past, we're lucky to find just one and now it's 
a more than one we can handle. And the question is start to become who has time to go through all available data set to figure out which one to use. And in the past, we tend to have more time to allow us to um, learn about data set. And now everything has to be done like yesterday. So sharing data set quality information is more important than ever to support informed decision on use of the data set. Um, this is one of the main challenge um, for sharing data set quality information because the data set quality is multidimensional and it requires cross disciplinary knowledge. And the quality has, data set quality has many quality attributes. On the right side here is the, um, from Wang and Strong 1996, they have uh, collect 179 quality attributes that are um, useful or important to data consumers based on the 179 quality attributes, they prioritized 15 quality attributes and grouped them into four dimensions, uh, intrinsic, contextual, representational, and accessibility. I have talked about those um, last time I, I have given a presentation. Uh, the quality, um, information quality cluster, um, we have published paper led by Rama in 2017. Uh, we have um, grouped the quality uh, uh, data and information dimensions into four, um, namely science, product, and storeship and services. So for the, um, I'm just going to go really quickly. For the science, uh, there are two, uh, there are three, uh, for each dimensions, uh, we have about three uh, key stages. For the science is, um, they are defined, develop, validate. So the quality attributes associated with the science tend to be data accuracy and the decision positions and certainties. And for the product um, that measures how well the product has been produced, evaluated and utilize, utilized, um, either released publicly, publicly as a research product or delivered to data centers or repositories. And then the quality attributes um, would have like components of data um, the how good is data format in terms of the data standard data format standards and estimate of error sources. And for the storeship, sorry, for the storeship, the um, quality attributes, oh, including completeness of metadata, and that touch on how the data is being uh, curated, uh, preserved, and uh, accessed and here it's more of to um, do like curate metadata and to enable data to be accessed that the get to the service part that will be how the service accessibility and the time limits of service is also very important um, again i'm just going to go through really quick here and uh, uh, once you get a chance, I think the slides will be shared once you get a chance to take a look at it. And we are also interested in the feedback on this particular um, diagram. Um, to give you a little background on how we started and where we're now, uh, the initial discussion, uh, it, it's between ESIC, IQC, and the Barcelona Supercomputing. Um, the, evaluation and quality control team in September 2019. Um, then the announcement was made to um, prospective collaborators, international domain expert for a pre ESIP workshop uh, in early 2020. And, and then we had a meeting in the summer 2020 
uh, we had two live sessions and uh, online resources for two weeks. And I think the, um, the data quality interest group had a pre pre ECIP workshop and provide very uh, beneficial feedback to our workshop and Ivana give a presentation as Ming has mentioned. So the, the workshop have explored um, multi dimensions of data and information quality and the challenges and need and the current approach of capturing and representing data set information uh, quality. And the, we have kicked off the development the community guidelines and uh, the couple calls were made to the community for the working group. Um, then the working group has been established and since then has uh, been developing the guidelines by consolidating community impact, um, collecting the uh, community best practices. So in August, we have um, put out, um, published the workshop summaries with a case statement. Um, in December, we also submit a call to action statement for the FAIR data set quality information to data science journal to be included as a special collection of open science. And here are some of the principles for uh, developing guidelines and the approach is to adapt the fair guiding principles. And uh, we, um, we are taking a whole data set life cycle approach um, that includes all different dimensions of the quality. And because of the, um, the attributes, quality attributes and assessment types are many, many, and they are depend on the fitness for purpose. Uh, for purpose, we decide to make them um, the guidelines to be agnostic for quality attributes and assessment type, and uh, the the develop of the uh, guidelines um, is really for the community by the community and. Uh, it is through a iterative process and uh, with the continued engagement, including uh, we're doing this one and uh, the leveraging the community best practice and standards. Um, so the there are a lot of the, uh, we're not really doing this from scratch. There are a lot of community based practice and international standards in the various um, part of the quality, uh, de describing quality information, and we're trying to um, put together, integrating them, and make it easier for the community who needs or would like to uh, capturing and representing quality information. So the quality um, information guidelines uh, document. Uh, develop is co-organized by three main entities, once ECIP IQC and uh, Barcelona Supercomputing EQC team, as well as the uh, data quality interest group. And the I have put this out to um, uh, of the participants to give you a sense of the geospatial coverage as well as the knowledge coverage and not just uh, um, data acquisition production is also including uh, data and information management, data publishing and services and applications. So we're trying to uh, include as much, uh, um, the, as many disciplines, uh, domains as we could and to um, hopefully we'll, come up something that will be um, beneficial to the whole community. So for the next five slides, I'm going to talk about the uh, guidelines in detail. And let me see if my time wise, and I was hoping to finish early to give you more time. Um, and the guideline, first of guidelines to describe data set and 
it, we recommend to include the title, um, the persistent identifier, uh, version, public state, and if the um, data is a user and you want to um, put in date that's accessed, and if the applicable and put in the, we recommend to include usage license. And this is to ensure the data set is findable and accessible. The guideline two is to utilize a structured quality assessment models. So the um, structure in the sense that um, in the form of metric or maturity metrics, for example, and uh, um, they make sure that they are versioned and are publicly available and registered or indexed and retrievable by their identifiers. And this is to ensure that the assessment model is findable and accessible. And guideline three is about capturing the assessment method and result in a data set level metadata record um, to recommend to be sem uh, semantically and structurally consistent and including description of the quality assessment or dimension that uh, is assessed and the method and the model structure and version and assessment result and also including the versioning and re revisions of assessment like provenance of the assessment. This is to ensure the quality information is uh, interoperable and reusable for machine and users. The, this one is to ensure that the information is findable, accessible and reusable for human and um, and users. So that will be preferable following a template and publish with a um, license, preferable uh, CC0 or CC BY license and linked to the data set metadata. Um, so they are connected. The last one is to um, recommend reporting and disseminating the data set quality information on a website interface and the um, to describe the data set according to the guideline uh, the guideline one and including assessed quality attributes and method and the process or workflow and including um, a description about how to understand and use the information and this is to ensure that information is online findable and readily usable. So we are in the process um, completing the guideline document uh, to make it ready for review. And um, with the paper review uh, revisions, uh, we push it back a little bit. I think currently uh, the plan is to have it to the middle of April. Um, then the baseline will be uh, several months after that. So as I have mentioned, although the working group, we trying to include domain expert, um, we cover the wild spectros and we still, um, it's likely we won't be able to include everything. So your feedback is crucial in improving the quality of the guidelines. And the, the work are not possible uh, without the effort from the International Fair Data Quality Information Community Guidelines Working Group. And you probably see a um, number of the familiar names from this list. And um, names in, board, uh, in bold are the organizing committee for the pre ESIP workshop. And if you are interested uh, in supporting this effort in any way, uh, contact us. I listed the IQC co-chairs uh, email here. I think that's what I have. Yeah, I, I have uh, um, several 
backup slides there if you're interested to take a look at it afterwards.